this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Stephanie Melgoza? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing you by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. In 2022, Stephanie Melgoza lived in Farmington, Illinois. She was a student at Bradley University. On Sunday, April 10, Stephanie consumed alcohol at a place called Tavern 41 in East Peoria, Illinois. She entered her Dodge Dart and started driving toward an establishment called the Throttle Bar. At around 10.15 p.m., Stephanie struck two pedestrians with her vehicle, 55-year-old Paul Prowant and 43-year-old Andrea Rosowitz. The two victims were walking from the bar. They did not survive the collision. When the police arrived on the scene, they found that Stephanie's Dodge Dart had serious damage to the front end, and there was a severed leg sticking out of the grill. Stephanie had slurred speech, and her eyes were red and watery. The police detected a strong odor of alcohol. In her vehicle, the police found an open bottle of vodka, a baggie of cannabis, and a hitter pipe. A police officer spoke to Stephanie at the scene. She denied using marijuana. The officer searched her and explained to her that he was going to conduct a field sobriety test. The officer read Stephanie her rights, but she unwisely agreed to talk to him anyway. Stephanie explained that she was on her way to the location where the collision happened when, quote, suddenly one person walked out in front of me and my car got hit, unquote. She called 911 right away. Stephanie said, quote, they came out of nowhere because I'm a safe driver, unquote. She told the officer that she was traveling at least 40 or 45 miles per hour. The speed limit there was 30 miles per hour. She admitted that she had drinks of vodka that evening, with her last drink being consumed about 40 minutes earlier. When talking about a field sobriety test, Stephanie told the officer, I think I would pass. Don't test me, but I think I would pass. The officer conducted a field sobriety test. It took a few minutes to get through it. When Stephanie did something right, she was very pleased with herself. There was a lot of smiling going on during the test. She was asked to follow an object in the officer's hand with her eyes without moving her head. She struggled with this task quite a bit. At one point, she even put her hands on her face in order to keep her head from moving. The officer told her to stop. When the officer moved to the test where Stephanie had to walk in a straight line by putting one foot in front of the other, Stephanie continued to struggle. Her performance did not improve when she was asked to balance on one foot. After this, the officer administered a breathalyzer, which indicated that Stephanie's blood alcohol level was 0.264%, over three times the legal limit for driving in Illinois. Stephanie was arrested and taken to a hospital. In the exam room, she talked about an upcoming trip to Las Vegas, saying that it was going to be fun, and she was going to start off with two Long Islands. The officer responded, you haven't had enough drinking already? Stephanie said, we're talking about Vegas. There is no limit, right? On the exam room table, Stephanie entered into what could loosely be referred to as an extended singing and dancing routine. Stephanie asked the officer if she could get back in her car in time to make it to school the following day. The officer responded, quote, you want me to be honest with you? You're going to jail. You don't have a bond. You killed two people tonight. I don't think you understand that. You do not have a bond. You are not getting out of jail. Your car is the property of the East Peoria Police Department because it's a crime scene. It killed two people tonight. You are clueless with that clearly, as I have explained this to you. You are going to jail for reckless homicide tonight. You're going to jail for aggravated DUI for killing two people. That's what's going on. So no, you're not going to school tomorrow. Unquote. After this, Stephanie asked if she could go Tuesday for a night class. The officer replied, did you just hear what I told you? Stephanie explained how the officer answered her question about going to school tomorrow, but now she was talking about going to school Tuesday. The officer asked her if she understood what he said about her killing two people. She responded, quote, I'm just wondering when I can go to school, unquote. 
The officer paused a few seconds and then said, quote, You're on body camera being completely careless about killing two people tonight. You could care less. That's sad and pathetic and horrible all at the same time, unquote. Stephanie then became judgmental and asked, Can you say that as a cop? The officer replied, Yes, ma'am, I can. At this point, Stephanie once again attempted to perform a little singing and dance routine. After word of Stephanie's arrest was made public, students at her college protested and asked that she not be permitted to graduate. The college ultimately conferred her degree, but she did not take part in the commencement ceremony. In April 2023, a year after the fatal collision, 24-year-old Stephanie Melgoza entered a plea bargain without any agreement as to a sentence recommendation. She pleaded guilty to two counts of aggravated DUI and two counts of aggravated reckless driving. Four lesser charges were dismissed as part of the plea bargain. She was facing up to 28 years in prison. At her sentencing, she said that she was sorry for everything and indicated that she would never commit anything like that again. She went on to say, quote, I have not drank since that day. I do not plan on drinking ever again. I want to try to do something positive to make a difference, speak out about this and warn others about the dangers that come with drinking. I never meant to hurt anybody. I will live with this for the rest of my life, unquote. Even at this point, facing years in prison, Stephanie blamed the dangers of drinking and not the dangers of her decision to drink and drive. The judge sentenced Stephanie to 14 years in prison. She must serve at least 85% of that sentence, and under another law, she may be eligible for 120 days off. This means that Stephanie must serve at least 11 and a half years in prison. She could be out when she is about 35 or 36 years old. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts in a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Stephanie's demeanor after killing two innocent people is one of the more shocking elements of this case. She was laughing, smiling, singing, dancing, and appeared to have no regard for the fact that she killed people. She was more interested in getting back to school and resuming her life than accepting responsibility. At one point, she mentioned how she could not wait to join the DUI club. She asked for her phone so she could text her coworkers, claiming they all had DUIs. Some people look at her behavior as proof that Stephanie is arrogant, entitled, cold, callous, and sadistic. Other people argue that the way a person appears when intoxicated can be completely different from their actual personality, like the alcohol makes a person appear narcissistic when they are not. Here are my thoughts on this. Alcohol modifies a person's behavior in a number of ways. It can make a person disinhibited, uncoordinated, and unable to think clearly but it does not elicit an alternate personality. The behavior of a person who is intoxicated reflects their underlying personality characteristics. Furthermore, Stephanie probably had to have some of those negative characteristics to drink and drive in the first place. This was an extremely reckless and unacceptable act. One particularly telling moment in Stephanie's conversation with the officer is when she judged him for calling her pathetic which was an accurate observation. She asked, can you say that as a cop? It would appear as though Stephanie's ability to be judgmental was intact, regardless of her level of intoxication. Yet she was unwilling to apply this judgmental nature to herself. This indicates a sense of entitlement and arrogance. Item number two, not long after the officer arrived at the scene, it was evident that Stephanie was trying to minimize her involvement. She claimed the collision only involved one pedestrian and said, my car got hit. It wasn't enough for Stephanie to deny responsibility. She took this a step further and played the victim. At another point, Stephanie said, I go to Bradley. Why would this happen to me? This again indicates how she was trying to frame homicide as something bad that happened to her. She was the victim of her killing someone else. Stephanie appeared to have a concern for the future. She said, I graduate in four weeks. Is this going to affect anything? It would appear as though killing two people was very inconvenient for Stephanie's plans. Item number three. If this crime had not occurred, what was Stephanie's plan for the evening? It sounds like she was just getting started with her alcohol consumption. 
When she was in the hospital, she talked about looking forward to more alcohol on a trip that she was planning on taking. I think it's reasonable to believe that if she had not killed two people, Stephanie would have become more intoxicated and continued to drive. Item number four, Stephanie's father posted on social media complaining about hateful comments that his family received after the body camera video was released. He suggested that he and his family members were sorry for the horrible crime his daughter committed, but the harassment was uncalled for. He argued that his family should not have to pay for the crimes committed by his daughter. His daughter was guilty, but the rest of his family did nothing. I agree with his assertion. A family is not typically responsible for what one member of the family does. Nobody benefits from innocent people being harassed. The person guilty in this case is Stephanie. She is the one who should be punished. Which brings me to item number five. What does justice look like in the case of Stephanie Malgoza? At sentencing, the judge said, quote, Our system is based on punishment and rehabilitation. I have to balance them, but it is not all about rehabilitation. There is a sentence that is necessary to deter others and that needs to be out there, unquote. The judge continued by offering this profound statement, quote, This is the easiest fatality in the U.S. to get rid of, unquote. There is no doubt that the judge was correct about this. 28% of all motor vehicle collision fatalities involve alcohol-impaired drivers. All of those are avoidable. DUI-related deaths have been called the most publicly hazardous consequence of addiction. Very few DUI offenders are actually arrested for driving drunk. Somewhere between 1 in 100 and 1 in 200 DUI events result in an arrest. The mental health treatment community has not been successful in developing treatment models to help DUI offenders. These criminals tend to have traits that are highly resistant to change, including impulsivity, aggression, and excitement seeking. As far as Stephanie's sentence, I think the judge was a little generous with 14 years. 22 years in prison would have been more reasonable in my opinion. There are a few reasons I would have gone with a longer sentence. Stephanie was extremely callous and self-centered. She blamed alcohol right before being sentenced, and she set out on a very dangerous path that fateful night with the apparent intent of drinking and driving. Why did she drive herself to a bar and then drink too much to drive safely? She had to have known when she arrived that she would be leaving in her own vehicle. She was sober when she made that lethal decision. Stephanie has only herself to blame. Sadly, no amount of prison time will undo the damage Stephanie caused. Perhaps it's time for the criminal justice system to start taking DUI-related deaths seriously. Those are my thoughts on the case of Stephanie Malgoza. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.